Hello out there, digital makers. It's Wednesday, and so that means it's time for digital making at home. This week's episode is a motorized one. I can't wait to get my Raspberry Pi Pico out again and have a tinker with all of you. If you haven't already, say hi in the chat and let us know where in the world you are. I'm Mr. C, and I'm coming to you live from Cambridge in the UK. Back with us once again is the motivational Christina. Hello, everyone. I'm joining from Nebraska in the USA, and thank you to everyone joining us from all over the world once again for another great episode of Digital Making at Home. Great to see you, Mr. C. You too. Now, we already have lots of folks in the chat early. GJ Fax, Andrew, Larry, all of us on YouTube. Great to see you here with us again. Welcome. It's so lovely to hear from you all. Today, we've got Dahlia as our special guest. She's a coder from Gaza and Palestine who has just been selected for some really amazing internships with huge tech players. We'll talk to her about her journey to becoming a geek. Then Mr. C is gonna show us how to get some motors working on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Right on. And for those of you who are with us for the first time this week, welcome. Uh, digital Making at Home is all about helping young people empower themselves and others in the digital age by encouraging them to create with technology. Every Wednesday, we see amazing digital making projects from young people worldwide. We make cool gadgets together and chat with incredible inventors and makers from all over the globe. And we love having all of you here with us each week making cool stuff. We broadcast every episode live to YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Your comments come through to us live on those platforms, and we love hearing from you all each week during the show. Feel free to jump in, ask questions, or let us know your opinion. We get all your messages and we love your input. And when we get a great question or one of you shares some love, we love to shout you out. So keep the comments rolling in. It's really nice to see Alex Martinez, Claire, John, Ali again. Great to see you all in the chat today. And make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube, everybody, because it really does help the channel out. Or head to rpf.io slash sub and you'll get all of our new content as soon as it comes off the press. And when yes. you subscribe, then you get to be the first to know when we go live. Yes, subscribe, subscribe, and join this amazing global community. And I mean global, I'm looking at the chat right now. I see Ali in Iraq. I see Claire in England, John in Canada, Okunjon, I hope I pronounced this correctly, in Uzbekistan, Puerto Rico, Alex, hello, welcome, welcome. We are a community of digital makers, educators, and explorers coming together to change the world with digital making. Subscribe and join the digital making adventure. Should we bring Dahlia on now and have a chat with her? Yes, let's bring her on. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Dahlia. Thanks for being with us today. Hi, Christina. Hi, Mr. C. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to, hear with, to be here with you. Yes, we're super excited. So, Dahlia, let's jump in. You describe your journey as becoming a geek in your article. What, when did you start becoming a geek? Yeah, so I've always loved uh, technology classes in school. And when I was 15, I decided to start taking courses to learn more about technology. Uh, that's when where I got a training uh, program with one of um, the companies here in Gaza, where I learned about uh, circuits and uh, electronics. And that's when I built my first um, circuit. Uh, like they told us, um, it's a uh, traffic light. Yeah, this is like it was a traffic awesome. light. And I was so impressed, like we can do something with those little pieces. So I decided to learn more about it and I participated with a robot competition actually, a line follower robot with uh, my school. So me and my friends, we built that robot using Arduino. We didn't know anything about it. Like my teacher did a great work teach us about this and we got the first place in that competition. And, Amazing. Yeah, and this is, I want to share with you the reward they gave us here. So this is the circuit they gave us, and I used to spend so many hours just exploring those uh, pieces and trying to learn what they do. Yeah, That's a congratulations then, uh, on the award. That's so cool. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it, it was an amazing experience since it was my first one. So I decided to move on and learn more about technology and build like some development and, and develop um, some software projects. So I kept participating with uh, competitions, building uh, mobile apps, uh, like using App Inventor. And uh, I actually, I took many online courses um, that when I depend all of myself by learning about um, computer science and uh, many programming languages. And yeah, after high school, I decided to join university uh, with uh, computer uh, engineering. So I studied my first year. Uh, then I went to Jordan 
to join a boot camp there when I learned about full stack um, web development. Uh, and yeah, that was like a life changing experience for me. I got to know um, so many um, sections and fields in technology. And and yeah, after that experience, I went back to Gaza completed, um, and continued with my studies. I'm still studying in the university. And uh, I, I decided to go for an internship. So I spent many weeks, many months studying and preparing, reading many articles, learning about many technologies uh, to get the internship and did so many mock interviews, but it was so fun. Like sure, it, it, it requires hard work, but it was so fun at the same time. And, uh, yeah. Definitely, Sorry. definitely. And could you, like, could you tell us a little bit, what are some of the things you learned at the boot camp? Yeah, sure. So uh, one of the most important things I learned is teamwork. So I learned how to work with other people, how to um, co um, solve the conflicts, uh, how to decide on things. And uh, also I've learned how to manage my time. Like, of course, it's so important to learn about technologies. And at the same time, it's important to learn about soft skills. And um, yeah, and also I learned about uh, front-end development, like uh, CSS, HTML. I learned about um, so, uh, so many other technologies like uh, React, Angular, so many cool stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So <laughs> after you became a geek, how did you get onto the path to becoming a professional developer using these boot camps and things and the stuff that you learned? How did you jump then to getting an internship? Yeah, so after the uh, boot camp, we learned the fundamental fundamentals about the de uh, software development. So of course, we had to go through um, exploring more projects and uh, learning uh, or reading more articles uh, about those um, new technologies. And the most important thing is keep practicing, like never stop. Just keep exploring, keep uh, reading, working. And um, I, when I decided to go for an internship, I just uh, read about uh, people's experience before and uh, looked at the requirement. For example, uh, the interviews for the internship requires uh, data structure and algorithm knowledge. So that's where when I spend my hours studying about this topic. Well, yeah, we found you through a blog post where you talked about your journey and studying your internships, which was actually a blog post that went viral on the internet. What was it like to go viral? Yeah, actually, I didn't notice. I didn't expect this uh, to happen. So one of uh, the, the the things that happened with me that my partner with uh, with the team that I'll be working with in the internship, like I didn't start my internship yet. I'll be starting it in this summer. So she said, like, I could, I recognize you from somewhere. And I said, like, what? No way. Like, you're fr you're in the UK and I'm in Gaza, Palestine here. He said, no, I read your post. So that was really amazing to me that it went so viral. That's cool. And in January, you were offered and accepted that internship. Could you tell us a bit more about it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, I applied for the internship in October 2020. And I went through the process where we had to go uh, to do interviews and um, some tests. And I, I've got... I received the acceptance uh, email in January uh, 2021, and that was like the most or the best um, New Year uh, to start with. And I was so excited that I didn't even think it is possible. But it's important that to keep in mind that all of us have uh, the abilities to do what we want if we just kept hard working and um, never stop. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, look, what a, what a great New Year's like gift, right? To be able to go. So you, I also read that this will be like your first time traveling with like, or at, like on a plane. Where, where are you going for your internship? Who's the internship with? Yeah, like I'm so excited for this. This summer, I, it will be my first time traveling and get on a plane. I'll be uh, moving to Germany. So yeah, it, it will be a different whole experience for me. Wow. That's amazing. amazing. I've never been to Germany. That's really exciting. Oh, that's super incredible. So now with with that, how are you getting prepared for your internship? Yeah, so uh, now besides my studies, I'm studying in the, in the university. Uh, now, like I, I'm focusing on the stack that my team I'll be working with in the internship. So I asked about the stack they work with so I can read more and maybe I can explore more projects 
uh, about these topics. And um, I spend my time reading about uh, or reading more about computer, computer science um, topics. Cool. I saw in your article too, lots of people asking you for your advice on your pathway and how you like the, the steps that you took to get there. But what advice would you give to other girls out there who want to follow in your path? Yeah, uh, sure. So the first thing, if you're uh, really interested in something or if you're enjoying doing something, uh, maybe it will, it will be sometimes uh, hard, it, but it, just keep going. Never stop and try to enjoy it. Uh, it will be so much fun when you get to what you want and of course it's worth it so just keep uh, your hard work and enjoy the process amazing incredible <laughs> advice thank you very much for coming along today it's been really amazing to have you dahlia thank you for just coming to spread your inspiring story yeah thank, thank you, you so, so much dahlia see you later yeah. right. see you later bye, bye. How cool is Dahlia? What an amazing, inspiring story. And we shared the blog post in the chat. Definitely check it out. And we can't wait to see what she gets up to in the future. So mm -hmm. how about let's do some coding, Mr. C. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I've always found it quite tricky when working with motors on my Raspberry Pi. So because there's more to think about when you're just using like versus just using like simple components. So I'm ready for you to teach us. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, it's true. There is another step up to using motors in your projects, which can be a little bit daunting or scary for people doing it for the first time, because there is like the motor controller uh, in the middle of sort of what you're doing now. So there's like a whole other component that you need to put in the middle as the middleman to make everything work. I think you see it there, so my motor controller, and we'll go through what that does a bit later. Um, but if you have one at home, so you should be able to work out where your wires will go into this motor controller, um, and it should be all good. All right, so we're going to hook up some motors to our Pico, bo Pico board <laughs> today and get them to go, right? Absolutely, yeah, exactly. So it might sound tricky, but I'm going to take us through one step at a time uh, using, like I say, this very generic motor controller. So if you have a motor controller at home, then you should be able to work out what we're doing here with your one because all the wires and ports are usually labeled the same thing. Okay, great. Now remember for folks at home, if you want to pause or rewind, you always can or rewatch later on our YouTube channel. So Mr. C, what's our first step? So um, you'll see here on my workbench that I've got a few different bits and pieces here. I've got my Pico. Uh, I've got a little chassis that I had lying around from when me and the boys um, half finished a robot and didn't actually get to the end of it. So you can see that I've got two of these We've little all motors half finished. <laughs> All these half so this is a, what we call a simple yellow motor, um, and you can get them pretty much anywhere. They're very cheap. Um, I wouldn't call them disposable. I don't like to say that sort of thing. But that if you break one, it doesn't really matter because you can get another one. It's okay. They're like really good experimental motors for people doing robotics for the first time. Um, I've got a motor controller board. So, again, this is like just a very generic uh, cheap one. I'm pretty sure it was the cheapest one I could get my hands on. Um, and if you can see here that it's got some ports where I've got a battery connector wired up because we need to have external power, which is one of the big things about a motor controller board. So your Raspberry Pi and your Pico, they're not designed to push that sort of voltage that we need in order to power the motors. So we have this in the middle to protect our Pi from the power and to have that battery connected, which is here, uh, to actually power our motors and make them go. So Hi. the first thing we have to do is we'll do the wiring part and then we'll do the coding part because the code is very simple and we have a set script for you to use at home, everybody. So if you do want to do the project at home, the code that we've got for you is at rpf.io slash picobuggy uh, and you can get the code that I'll be using on the screen today and I'll talk you through how it all works. So you can just get the script, put it on your Pico. If you've got your motors wired up the same way I have, it will just go. Um, and so that's what we're going to do today. So you can see here, this is my motor controller. All right. And I've got these ones here that are connected to these terminal blocks for the power. So I've got two earths because I'll need to earth back to my Pico. Uh, and I've also got another black earth wire that goes straight back to the battery. Okay, So they're all nice and screwed in. And you'll see here on the bottom, uh, if I could just get it into focus for you. There we go. Yeah, so can you see down here where it says like 5 volt GND and 12 volt? I'll move yes. a little closer. Ooh, okay. out of focus. <laughs> out of focus. Oh, come on, camera. There you go. Okay. There you go. So I've got my battery hooked into the 12 volt power and the ground. Okay. And that's just literally just going to be the electricity that makes the motors go. It's nothing to do with our signal. That's all power. So I've got them pre wired. These terminal blocks here, there's one on each side. Okay. And they've got two little wires. And you'll see that they're labeled one and two and three and four. 
So in and out one and two and three and four. So you can sort of see that there. So what I'm going to do is I need to have from my red and black wires on my motors, which are popping out here, I'm going to connect these into the terminal blocks. Okay, so it's a really simple thing to do. I'm going to find out one and out two, and I'm going to connect my wires into the terminal block. And I'm just going to get one. Where did I lose my screwdriver? Here it is. A little tiny screwdriver. I'm just going to tighten these up so that if my robot decides to drive off the table, <laughs> it doesn't. I don't, it doesn't fall apart completely. Right now, you mentioned you grabbed like the the cheapest motor controller board that you could find, but like, are are they that different? Like, are they all about the same? Um, I mean, yes and no. So you can get more complicated ones that do other things. You can get sort of um, a simple H bridge is really all you need for this sort of thing. It's a very very basic one, which just works as a shield between the Raspberry Pi and the motors and the extra electricity that you've got there. Um, but essentially, they're all the same. Yeah, I've got a few of them in my box, and I could have really used any one, but this one is nice and simple, and awesome. very straightforward. Great. Well, folks, feel free in the chat. I'm seeing some folks just jumping in and saying hello, hello to I N B Casseros <laughs> on Twitch. <laughs> hello to you. Thank you so much for joining and seeing. We just added. I saw someone ask about um, Dolly's Twitter account, so we just linked that here in the chat. And hello, Chafia from Tunisia. So great to see you again. Hello, Chafia on Facebook. Great to have you. All right, I see you. We're, we're connecting in to the wheels now. Yeah, so I've got my wires all plugged in to the uh, outputs on my motor controller here, and that's all I needed to do. They're screwed in nice and tightly so that they're not going to fall off. And then I can just leave the motor controller now because it's all wired up for the bits that I need for the motors. The next thing I want to do is I can connect my battery and make sure that my power circuit's wired up. And you'll see with this one here, it's got a little red LED that pings on when I've nice. got my power connected. So if I connect my battery, okay, all good. So let's pop that on. And we've got power to our motors now. So I'm going to grab a little bit of blue tech and I'm going to blue tech my nine volt battery down to here. I'm going to slowly start assembling the robot as we go. I'm going to take the motor controller. Uh, and the next thing I need to do is connect up the Pico. So to connect the Pico, we're going to use four pins. Essentially, we're going to use pin seven, eight, nine, and 10. And we're also going to use the ground pin. So if you have a look at my screen, you'll see that I've got the pin out for um, the Pico there. And you'll see on the left-hand side, uh, just down here, we've got pins 7, 8, 9, and 10. And they're the ones that I'll be using today. So if you've got your Raspberry Pi Pico connected up to one of these sort of um, uh, breadboards, sorry, uh, my brain went a bit funny there. Uh, <laughs> if you connect up to one's breadboards, you'll see I've got little numbers down the side of these rows. So yep. 1 to 10, 11, all those. So we want to go for rows 10 to 14. They're the ones we're using today. So I'm going to take my uh, jumper cables. Where did I put my little four jumps here? They are. Okay. So I'm going to take my jumpers and insert them each into these little holes. 10, all right. 12, yeah, 13. 13 is the ground. So I'm going to skip that one and put it in 14. And then I'm going to take the ground pin that I had connected here, okay, so my loose ground pin, and that's going to go back into here, okay, and so that will be my earth for all of the things that I'm doing, that will just run back and close my circuit, and you have to have a ground for every pin, if you remember, Christina, to make it work. It's just, you read my mind, I was just about to ask, especially for folks that are new to electronics, the importance of ground. Absolutely, yeah, no, it's very important to have a ground on every circuit that you make, or otherwise it won't work, and so now you can see down here, it's very hard to see, even from my naked eye, um, but it, it's got some pins down here that are labeled like in one, in two, in three, in four. And so the order that I've got those pins in here, I'm just going to put them all in exactly the same order that I've connected them, which is why I left my four wires together, because now I've got a little ribbon that's not going to come apart. Okay, so that's just a little handy hint for everybody. Thinking smarter. You're always thinking smarter. Right, see? Don't work harder. Right, okay. So now I just need to connect all these up to my pins on the motor controller so that it will read that signal when my Raspberry Pi says, turn this motor on, then the motor controller will provide power uh, to that output. And so what we've done is we've connected, we've connected our motors, okay? So the positive and negative of our two little motors are connected here. So if I want it to drive both wheels forward, I just tell it, turn on both the red ones. If I want it to okay. drive backward, I tell it, turn on both the black ones, and my robot will go in reverse. Okay. And so that's essentially the code that we have. So if I'll show you the code here now, my funny. Okay. <clears throat> so 
So the script we have will run off the pins that we have set here. So like I say, you can use any pins you want, Christine. If you want to use the corner pins, knock yourself out, but you'll have to change the numbers in the code right. here. These numbers are the pins we're using. So at the top, we're doing all of our setup. So we're importing all of the modules we need. We're saying, go get the book or you won't know that I'm talking about pin. Go get the book or you won't know I'm talking about microtime. So we import those different modules. And then underneath, we're doing our setup. And remember, every Python script is the same. You import your modules at the top. You set up all your variables and your functions in the middle. And then you execute your script at the bottom. And so these four lines here are our setup, and we're telling it, when I say mode left forward, I'm telling you that pin seven, which is an output pin, is what I'm referring to. And then when we come down here, we say mode left forward, and we say value one, which means on. If we tell it value zero, which is down here, that means off. Absolutely, 100%, perfect. Binary situation, on or off. So we have both of our motors, left forward, right forward, on for three seconds, then both off and wait for three seconds, then both go backwards and for three seconds, and then both of them turn off. And that should be the end of our script. And so if you're running that at home, hopefully if you've got yours wired up like mine, it will work for you. Um, I'm just gonna make sure that I blue tack down my Pico board so it doesn't go walk about if my robot decides to drive into my lap. Seeing excitement for Pico. John on YouTube said that his Pico's on its way. Mine too, John. <laughs> Trying to get those. And I see Z Zyke Live on um, Twitch is also asking about the Raspberry Pi Twitter. Yes, definitely follow us on Twitter, raspberry underscore pi. You can hear about updates on all the cool things Raspberry Pi. Yeah, all the things we do, that's right. Um, so what I'm doing now is the last step. Now that I've got my code on Thony, I just need to save it to the Pico. So I have my Pico connected by its USB cable to my laptop here. And you can see that down in the bottom right of my Thony window, I've got it set to MicroPython. It's very tiny, hard to see. Uh, but I've made sure that I've got the language down here set to MicroPython for the Pico. And then I want to file and save as save as and it will, uh, where do I want to save it to so hang on a sec let's reconnect my picker and make sure that it's oh, yeah. oh, ah, we're going. it took off it's already ah. running so we know it worked ah. <laughs> it was going it's in circles off. trying to drive into my lap it's doing it <laughs> okay so all that right. is always that's always the risk I really should have put it on a jack so that's another tip for <laughs> robots at home if you you know those little things, do you know what? Here's a really insider tip for you. You know the things you get when you order a pizza that keep the lid off your pizza? Yes. Best robot jacks ever. Oh, Best great robot jacks ever. It up. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. So good. Cool. So top that's it. Here, so the top tip here at Digital Making at Home. That's it, right? The pizza box. I'm telling you, the pizza box spread out robot jack from way back. So that's it. You just flash the program onto the Pico. And then now when it runs, if I unplug it, so I unplugged my Pico from the laptop. Um, and now when I run it on my battery pack, if I just connect it to the power that I have set up here and I just push go, it's, it's driving. And it'll stop three seconds and then it'll go in reverse. So just see, why do you need a motor controller? Like, exactly. uh, well, a few reasons. Um, they take the signal from your Raspberry Pi and they transfer them to the motor. Um, they also provide that extra power because motors usually use more power than the Pi can put out. And you can also sort of like damage the Pi if they pull too much juice. So when you think about um, drinking straw, right? If you're trying to pull too much water through that drinking straw, you have a chance of damaging that, that, that conductor, yeah? And we have the same thing with the Pi. When you pull too much power through, you can damage your Raspberry Pi and burn out pins. Yeah. And also when motors spin down, or if I took the motor here and I turn the motor by hand, it actually works as a generator and it will produce electric current that it can push back into the computer and damage the Raspberry Pi that way too. Um, and that's the thing, like if, if I have this robot now and I run it backwards and forwards on the table or something, a book falls out and it rolls over my desk, it could push electricity back into my Pi and mm. pff, burn it out. Okay. Or Pico. <laughs> Definitely. We're seeing Alistair on YouTube. First rule of robotics, do not let wheels touch desk when testing. Thanks, Alistair. We just learned that today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that's the We're thing. used I to having the pizza ago, thing. Yeah. We're used to having the pizza thing. <laughs> that's it, yeah, yeah. Oh, next, time, next time we're here, I'm sure I've got a few lying around somewhere. I can find my toolbox. I've got a few pizza spreaders in the toolbox. 
And, and we've like got a suggestion from, I was, just, I was saying we have a suggestion from Jack. You can always use ultrasonic and infrared detectors. <laughs> we've used those in the past to make your robot avoid obstacles. You can also Absolutely. use the remote, remote control. Yeah, you can definitely add a lot yeah. more. And if you're new, I, was, I wanted to say, if you're new to Pico, we, we did a stream, an episode a few weeks back, introducing you all to Pico. So definitely check that one out. All of our past episodes are at um, rpf.io slash home. Yeah, absolutely. And we did a few different things today with the Pico, like getting mo motors control, uh, sorry, getting a motor controller connected, getting your motors hooked up. It's really not that tricky, right? I'm glad we got that done in the end. And I managed to catch the robot before it landed on my lap. So success. I know. I, I could just see like you going at the, the computer and then you're, just all, <laughs> you're just on the side finishing up digital making yeah, at yeah. home. Dragging and on. Thanks so much for showing us that project, Mr. C. I love, I, like, this is a great day. We got to chat with Dahlia and we got to see how to use motors on the Pico. It was super interesting and not as tricky as I thought it would be. Yeah, no, it just takes a bit of practice and being willing to go over your errors and sort of being patient, stepping through and making sure you have everything in the right place before you take that next step with motor controllers and things like that. Um, but yeah, hopefully our audience will have a go now in their next project and maybe build themselves a robot buggy or something similar. Um, you could hook it up to a webcam and have a remote control security drone that you drive around your house or something similar. Um, yes. That's something that I might do. Yeah, for sure. Make a project. And if you create an awesome, awesome project, awesome, awesome project, like a security robot, you could share it at Coolest Projects. Coolest Projects is one of our amazing programs where young people all over the world can showcase what they made with code. Folks, there are five days left to register a project. All types, all levels of projects are welcome. Microbit, Raspberry Pi, Pico, Scratch, HTML, Python. Share your project at Coolest Projects. Coolest project. The 2021 showcase is open for registration until Monday, May 3rd. You can go to coolestprojects.org for more information. It was so great to see so many of you all getting involved this week in the chat too. Shout outs to Larry B, John Lees and Jack Faust for their great contributions to the discussion towards the end there. Thank you everybody. And thank you Dahlia for coming on to see us this week. That's all we have time for this week, though you can always get in touch with us. Send us an email at dmah at raspberrypi.org to ask us a question or share something cool that you've made. If you're working on a project you want to share it with us, tweet a picture of it to us at raspberry underscore pi. Before we leave you one more time, make sure to like and subscribe so you're the first to be in the know and get all the updates on the other stuff on our channel as it comes out. Again, our channel is all about supporting young makers and educators around the world with fresh new stuff every week, so please don't miss out. Thank you all for being here for the Raspberry Pi Foundation's Digital Making at Home live stream. We'll be back at the same time next week with more digital making. Until then, stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, Christina. Bye.